vertical helix piercing. What you should know before you get it done. Coming up next on Consultations by a Piercer, episode number 10. So you might want to stick around. For those who are new to the channel, first off, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you're finding them helpful. But you might not know who I am. My name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skid Kitchen Tattoo. The piercing we're going to talk about today is the vertical helix piercing. Uh, basically, it's done vertically through the helix. The helix is this outer ridge or rim on the top of your ear. Um, kind of uh, and then goes down in the forward helix and then down into nothing on the outside, usually. Not on everybody. Um, often the easiest way to point this out is the stuff that uh, more traditional um, industrials are pierced through. Average healing time on this is anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks. However, some people it can be closer to 3 months to 6 months. It varies greatly from person to person, and it really depends on how well you can isolate this piercing during the healing process. During the healing process, you want to clean twice daily using a sterile saline solution. I like nail meds, piercing aftercare. Uh, you can also find substitutes. Uh, people often ask what I should look for. If you're looking for sterile saline, first off, it should say sterile. It should be in a pressurized can. And when you turn it over in the back, the only ingredients that should be on there in there are sodium chloride in distilled water. If it has anything else in it, that's not what you want. The only other thing I suggest doing is rinsing it under running water at the end of your shower. Kind of pull your hair and everything out of the way and just let that water flow over there. This is helpful in making sure that you don't have soap and et cetera collecting on it, shampoo, conditioner. But also, it, it helps to kind of break down that discharge and get it out of there and off the jewelry. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. No oral contact, no exchange of bodily fluids. Keeping your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels. Do not submerge the piercing of bodies of water. You cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. In other words, no swimming. Keep that away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you, especially the small ones that like to sit up by your face, steal your breath in your soul while you're sleeping. I <laughs> um, avoid contact with unclean objects. Culprits with this are things like telephones, headphones, hats, scarves, headbands. Anything that comes in contact with the area could possibly contaminate the piercing. Lastly, avoid contact with wet hair. Wear your hair up in a fun bun until it is completely dry. Uh, don't let it you know, drip dry against the piercing. Now let's talk about trauma, abuse, and pressure. Don't abuse your piercing. They're good. They're nice people. Don't abuse them. What we're talking about here is do not sleep on it. Sleep on your other side or your back or figure out a way to elevate it off the bed. Most common way that people use for this is like a U-shaped travel pillow or donut-shaped pillow and then put a clean sock on it every night just to make sure that it's clean. Avoid tight-fitting headphones, helmets, hats, scarves, headbands, bandages, you know, if you're going out as a mummy or something. Anything that puts a lot of pressure or bends or flexes that area is going to probably cause issues, and it's going to increase the likelihood of it getting caught and pulled on, which hurts. Do not spin, rotate, or move the jewelry. There is absolutely no reason to do this, no matter how many times you were told that at your local retail outlet. This is just going to prolong the healing period and cause other issues. If you have to wear a mask for work or because there's a pandemic or something, uh, be very careful when you're taking them off, putting them back on. Also, if there's any pressure or contact in the back, uh, try with the ear savers. The other thing is, is glasses. Make sure that if you're wearing safety glasses or anything, that it doesn't come in contact with you. When you get pierced, it's a good idea to bring whatever item you wear along with you to make sure that it doesn't have contact with your new piercing. One final thing with this one in particular is hair and brushing your hair and going to the beauty place. 
Because of where it's located at, it's really easy for hair and et cetera to get tangled up in it. Um, and then pressure is applied when you brush your hair and it pulls and yanks on the piercing and it gets caught. So be very cautious and make sure that's separated before you do anything strenuous in the area. And tell your uh, beautician that if they don't stay away from it, you're cutting off their fingers. Now let's talk about jewelry. What type of jewelry is going to work best? Straight posts. Uh, I don't suggest piercing with rings or curved barbells. This one really needs a straight post, either a labre or barbell, um, either threaded or threadless. Now, it's going to be oversized, so eventually you're going to need downsize. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. During the healing process, you do want to check if it is threaded. Check the threaded ends and make sure they're on there tight on a regular basis. Avoid ends in a fresh piercing especially that are easily going to get caught or snagged on things because it probably will on every piece of clothing that you own, every pillowcase, every pillow, everything that comes in contact with it. If you have a cone sticking out of it, it's going to get caught on things. Downsizing. Uh, because we have to leave in that longer pose to allow for the inflammation, the swelling, we want you to downsize as soon as possible. Usually I suggest anywhere from four to six weeks. Have this professionally done. Go see your piercer. Let them do it. Uh, they have the proper tools to make sure that the piercing is not left empty. They can guide, use a guide pin to push it out and put the new one in. Um, at home, it can be kind of a struggle. struggle plus, you can't see what you're doing. Just let them do it. The main reason we want you to downsize is to avoid contact with things and because those longer posts will sometimes start tipping one way or another and cause the piercing to migrate in that direction. Having that shorter, tight-fitting post is going to reduce the likelihood of that issue. Pain. Uh, this piercing, I wouldn't say is an extremely painful one. It's your average cartilage piercing. Uh, quick poke, very quick piercing to get done. Usually um, you'll you'll have like kind of a sharp pain and then a little bit of heat and then a little bit of throbbing aching that lasts a few minutes. Then every damn time you touch it for the next couple of weeks, it's going to hurt. So it'll be tender to the touch for a while. As far as the anatomy, the helix itself needs to be pronounced enough to support the jewelry and the piercing. If it's very flat or not very pronounced, then you are not a good candidate for this piercing. Um, it can reject or migrate out if there's not enough tissue there. And uh, the other thing is, is these are sometimes done in groupings. So it really is dictated by your anatomy where you place them and how much uh, you can do there is really, you know, how thick the tissue is, how supportive it is, etc. cetera. Um, it really should be something that's done to fit in, into the anatomy and make it look like it belongs there. Lastly, things you should consider and maybe haven't. Um, if you're going on vacation or you go swimming a lot, you might want to wait until after your vacation is over or, um, you know, after you're done swimming for the season. This piercing, I, it's one of those things, whenever you're on vacation, you're in a strange environment, you can't control it, you're at sometimes a little bit more stressed even though we go on vacation to relax. So it's usually best to wait and postpone that until you get back, especially since most hotels, motels, et cetera, have pools or you're, you know, it's wintertime. You're going somewhere nice where you can swim. So just go on vacation, enjoy your vacation, then come back and deal with the piercing. The other thing to consider is if you're involved in any type of organized activities or competitions or drama, et cetera, that's going to require you to remove these pieces of jewelry to perform. Piercings do not do well with this take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in, especially during the healing period. It's usually best that if you are going to have to remove the jewelry on a regular basis, that you go ahead and postpone it until you're done doing those type of activities. If you're unsure about it, talk to the person in charge. Don't just assume there is an address code because 10 to 1, there is a dress code. I know I've already talked about this, but isolating and uh, avoiding sleeping on the piercing is a huge part of having this piercing heal easily. The more you isolate it, the more you keep things away from it, the less likely you're going to have issues. Lastly, uh, the placement of this piercing and the angle can dictate what type of jewelry you can wear in that in the future. So keep that in mind. Talk to your piercer about what your plans are for the future, if you have any. If you like this, find it helpful, uh, useful, what have you, please subscribe, hit that notification bell um, so you're notified every single time you 
we post something. Also share with other people. Make comments if you have something to say or something to share or have questions. Go ahead and make a comment. If you like merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Till next time, you're so really piercing skill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Maybe one of these videos. <laughs>